Welcome to Stampscaping 101. We're going to do a holographic card. I was going to get away from this, but we have found that uh, someone has found that Toxic Studios, I believe, has this paper. So I can use it again. I thought it was completely discontinued. I don't know if it is in terms of the manufacturing, but as long as it's available out there, uh, we can use it here on this video channel. Not that I couldn't, but I don't like to use things that are completely discontinued. Okay, so we have um, some 100% cotton balls here. Okay, don't try to use the synthetics, or go ahead and try to use them if you have them. They don't work for me at all. Um, but these ones do. All right. Cheap and readily available. This, eh, I don't know. I think worth it, M you know, more expensive than um, just regular cardstock, of course, but quite dynamic and I think worth the, uh, kind of the effort and price. Um, this is called Holographic Rainbow here. They have, I don't know, so many different holographic papers out there and I, I kind of like them all. This one just happens to be the one that I got uh, whenever I saw it way back when. And I don't know if I saw a whole lot more. I don't do a lot of shopping, but um, I don't know. When I've ever been, whenever I've been around paper, um, kind of the shimmery, iridescent, and I don't know, just kind of the crazy ones um, are ones that tend to catch my eye. Okay, so... Um, Jeannie has, uh, someone on Facebook has posted, and a Stampscapes user, has posted a photograph with some trees with a lot of, um, light beams coming out of it. And there's not going to be the super crazy holographic look, but there was some color in here. And the thing about the beams were, is that they were kind of white blocked off, and then there was some color in the beam and then it was blocked off again so it was like going white color white okay in each of the beams that were coming out and it's one of those things where you saw these crepuscular rays which are parallel rays you know you've seen it all before coming out of the clouds or through trees or you know in the darkness or whatever and they're coming out um you know using a single vanishing point i've done that many times in different scenes uh i don't remember using it on the holographic i might have but we're going to try something like that. Okay, so, um, trying to figure that out right now. Okay, I think what I'm going to do to make this easier for me and so that I can remember and have something as a guideline, I think I'm going to take a white dot. We'll just kind of do a, um, a single point perspective here with the, um, raise the light beams, okay? So I'm going to draw a little dot right there just so I know um, what to reference as far as the point of emanation, um, as far as these light beams come. All right, now I, I can either just freehand this in all these, um, I'm gonna black out um, uh, the surrounding area in here, okay? I don't know exactly where all of my imagery is going to come from, okay? I plan to do this a whole forest, okay, but for the most part, this is going to be the central image in here, okay? But, and there's different ways you can do this too, all right? Um, or many, many different ways. I think what I'm going to do, okay, now my tree is going to be right here, so I need all these beams to come back in here. I don't need it to... Um, I'll show you what I'm going to do right here. I don't need the mask off all the way to... Oh, here, I'm doing this completely different. Um, let's see here. Okay. I was completely mistaken here. I'm usually masking off and adding white, right? But here, I need to add these beams, so I'm just going to do some different width of beams here. I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, so that's one beam right here. Okay, that's a fairly wide one, right? And then we'll go on and we'll do, it's like folding paper airplanes or something like that. Okay, I'll have another beam that's thinner, like that. You don't, we don't need to go for, you know, 15 different sizes. I'll probably use three different widths here. Okay, so anyways, you can see where my creases are right here, okay? 
So those will be my beams. Okay, so we're working a little bit differently here. I'll take my scissor and don't worry about, you know, don't, you don't have to use a straight edge or anything like that. I, I want these beams to be softer anyway, so I'm just using this as a general um, mask, okay? I don't want, like I said, I don't want the beams to be so hard set um, and sharp, all right? I want this to be kind of a softer light and diffused. So we'll use this as a general mask and then we'll kind of uh, diffuse it. So we'll just kind of get some general um, beams going here. So let's see how this goes. This is going to be a very different um, experience for me in terms of the process, but the, uh, the concept is going to be the same. Okay, so wherever you mask off, that's going to be the beam in there, obviously. All right, so... Um, I don't know, you, you, you know, we'll, we'll just start adding them in here. You don't have to have everything totally conceived by now, okay? And we'll just add it in like this. This is Black Brilliance Ink, okay? Brilliance Ink is designed to dry on non-porous surfaces, like such, you know, a glossy cardstock is really a porous surface. It's just not as porous as like a mat, okay? But they designed it to be used on things like glossy cardstock because everyone used to use glossy cardstock. I don't know what, somewhere along the line, that, that was kind of a, for, a forgotten uh, service, you know, um, which was hard to imagine for me uh, just because it seemed like everyone used glossy cardstock um, back in the day, 20, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Okay, so that was what our beam is going to look like. It looks, I don't know, it looks kind of crazy, I know. Um, but again, I don't want it so hard and set like that, okay? So we'll just kind of start, keep, you know, uh, we'll just keep adding these in. Go ahead and overlap to some beams. I might make a beam on a beam as well, okay? So it's not like, um, and that's how crepuscular rays go. Sorry if my arm is in the way. Try <laughs> in here like so so you can see okay see that right there see I have this paper going up here now but the first time I went down here so I don't need things to be you know perfectly some see I can have another beam like this too all right so everything doesn't need to be so hard set and fast okay all right now every time I kind of have this little um, tip right here pointed right into that um, vanishing point Okay, now my first one right here, if this was symmetrical, would be up here, but I don't want everything so symmetrical, so I'm going to bring it down here, okay? Everything is kind of conceptual, you know, whenever you're doing something for the first time, but if you know kind of the general idea, you can kind of use different media, and I mean this one's a reversed um, masking, but it's the same concept though, okay, so don't look at it as like a, like a completely different technique or something like that, instead of, you know, putting in white and masking, you know, with this way, and adding that beam back in there, which we might do, you know, you're just doing, you're just taking that triangular opposite and adding it in like so, okay, you're, you're adding in the separate area, but it's the same concept, you have this reversed, uh, or a light on, within dark beam, okay? All right, let's 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 start playing around with some different sizes here. Here's kind of a, a narrower, where did my other ones go? Let me see, is this it? I think this is it. These two are about the same size, I don't know. Okay, so let's add these in. Let's go about right here. Eh, let's go, let's overlap this one a little bit here. Oh, I lost my cotton ball, here we go. Now see, as I go like this, I might be going into this one, okay? But that's fine. That's that's what you kind of want. See how I'm kind of staying in one area for a little bit, and then I kind of move? So you stay and move, stay and move. Okay, that's how um, it gets a little darker on the perimeter because I'm adding more, and then I kind of tap in where it gets less in the lighter area. 
Okay. Now, this, like I said, it doesn't dry on here instantly. Okay. It, it takes a few days to dry, but that's good because I can take a paper towel or another cotton ball and wipe into that black, and it'll wipe right off. Okay. I, I don't want it to wipe, you know, off completely. All right. But I do want some of it to wipe off. And that's where you get the control. The slower drying uh, the media, the more control you have over it because you have a lot more time to uh, manipulate it, especially after application. And You know, there, there's not a lot of uh, media out there, you know, where that really is coming into play, you know, um, manipulation post-application. I mean, if I don't like this at all, I can take a paper towel and just wipe this right off still. You know, and you would really wouldn't be able to see it. Okay, now, remember, I'm not using something like stays on right now. I'm using the brilliance, okay? All right, so see how these kind of rays are starting to develop? We have different kind of um, values of it. This this is a hard value right now. I need, you know, I'll need to keep working that. Uh, you know, I have a long ways to go here still. On this but uh, yeah, coming around let's go like this okay now see this one right here I'm going into this other black area so maybe I'll just be doing the bottom portion so you can play around with that too you can just do like after you kind of get things established in here you can just use one side of it like this and uh, if you're doing this too you can do this on like a silver or gold card. So like in terms of this technique right here with the uh, the drying time and everything like that. But everything kind of looks, I don't know. I mean, it looks pretty cool, but it, I mean, it doesn't look like that scene or anything like that at this point in time. You know, I'm like ways from that. All right, let's kind of go in here and bring some of this tone into this area like this and kind of get rid of some of these more harsh lines here. Now, as I go over this, that line is, you know, it's reasonably well, you know, kind of established. I'm not really smearing it around. Maybe if I wipe, I would smear. I don't know. But, I mean, it's not, the inks aren't fragile, in other words. You know, it's not like I'm just going to, you know, you know, tap into it and it's going to, you know, disappear or something like that. All right. See that right there? All right, so, I don't know, I, I'm kind of developing this as I go in terms of my concept here, too. I'm, I'm thinking maybe a, it'll be a combination of kind of sharp and diffused um, lines in here, okay? Edges, I should say, not really lines. Okay, we're getting some pretty good coverage right here. Um, let's go around here. Let's kind of discontinue some of these beams too and make them a little bit shorter, okay? So I'm going in here like so, and I'm kind of blocking out um, some of these areas. Okay, and this will kind of put a little bit of a, a, a perimeter, or it will, not a little bit. Let's go in like this too. Let's let's do this. Let's break some of these beams up in half like this. And bisect like that. I, I you know what I the whole thing here is that you know we're kind of creating we're we're creating variation, okay? It is kind of pattern too, but when you go for this variety like this, and things aren't so set hard and fast, it really gets us off the hook of having anything really particular, okay? In which, that's it's kind of liberating too, you know? Um, just from a creator's standpoint, you know, when you're doing this, it doesn't have to be exact, and matter of fact, it's, it's probably better if it isn't. Um, 
it just looks a little bit more um, natural and uh, free. I have to decide which way is up and which way is down. I think I, this is the uh, configuration. Okay, yeah, coming around, I guess. It's still really loud, though, isn't it? All right, let's try some. Let's go back in here and add a few more of these. Little fingerprint right there. It's inevitable. You're going to get fingerprints, uh, you know, when doing this technique. It's almost like you're applying wet soot or something like that onto your paper when doing this technique, or maybe oily soot, you know, because uh, these inks are oil-based. The brilliance just happens to be, you know, kind of a a faster drying oil-based um, ink. I don't know. It has some kind of binder or solvent in it or something like that. And it creates a little bit of a uh, faster drying time, or a lot faster drying time. I don't use Brilliance inks too much on like glossy cardstock, and uh, in the way that I use it. If I was stamping impressions, no problem. But um, I'm usually doing some sort of application like this with my um, pigment inks, so um, sometimes on the like other card stocks that are much more porous, um, matte or glossy, it just gets a little bit. Um, it dries so fast on me, so I can't really blend it out very much because it's almost like driving. You know, as soon as it hits the paper, practically, it, 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 you know, so it seems. Okay, so this is going to be the forest floor down here. Okay, so just in general, that tree is going to go back in here. Boy, that looks so busy. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Got a forest floor down here. I'm just adding uh, some darker tones. Okay, I, I think we're getting there. I think that's, I think that's roughly about where I'd like to go with that. Uh, we'll make some adjustments, though. I'll add in my white uh, tone in here, and then um, after doing that, I might make some adjustments, or I might make them after I um, stamp my imagery after I get kind of, you know, a better feel for what this is going to look like. I haven't, it's really difficult for me to tell how this is going to look. Okay, so this is me going in with the, just a, a dry, clean cotton ball, and I'm going to um, kind of do these little flares out like this, and that uh, hopefully it will kind of increase the, the softness end idea of kind of emanating light, okay? 
source of it from up here. Um, let me see if I can show you, see right here how that's kind of wiping. See this right harsh line right here? So we'll come in here like this and just kind of wipe into it. Use a real light touch, okay? Now if you want to remove more, then just use a more firm touch. But in areas like this, so we can kind of go into these areas like that. See that right there? How it's kind of breaking up that line and it looks more natural. See this real harsh line like that? I mean, I don't like that, so um, I just kind of diffuse it like that a little bit. And the surface, I mean, it looks real smeary and everything like that, because I'm smearing, you know, oil-based inks on my surface like that. But, um, hopefully, that will add, you know, contribute to the kind of the overall spirit of what, you know, we're kind of going after here. I don't have an exact idea. I'm, I'm definitely not, you know, trying to replicate a photo reference, but, you know, we're, we're referencing it. So what it's going to translate into a stamped scene, you know, it's going to be different because we're not, you know, this isn't photography. So um, we have to work with kind of the media that we have. Okay, so there we have it like that. It's a little bit more... See that right? scraping under there? I don't know, wiping or whatever. Not really scraping, but we have that. Okay, so that's going to be, that would kind of be cool, but I don't know, it's it's just too loud, you know, for um, kind of a, we want dramatic, but I, I don't want kind of maybe crazy. All right, I have a couple different things here. I have a stays on pigment that I can add in here. But I think I'm going to go with the brilliance first. Okay. All right. So clean cotton ball, white brilliance. All right. And what I do is I, I call this blocking out. It's kind of blocking off um, some of the, uh, or a lot of the, um, the characteristic of the paper. Okay. I want, I want to utilize it, but I don't want it to be the dominant factor everywhere. That's why we have to block some of it off, you know. That's why we're toning some of these in like that. Okay, so see I put some white right there. And I don't know if you can tell. Well, maybe I didn't add very much of it all, but like right in here, it's it's kind of blocking off that you know, that uh, that paper. Alright. So it's just not as it's not as crazy. Alright. Okay, so um, this is what I saw in that photograph uh, reference. Okay, so it was kind of, there were beams um, kind of on the perimeter like this. And then we had some of that color coming out of it. But the center area was was definitely um, um, kind of just white light. And I, I don't know, through whatever refraction or whatever, um, those beams were um, kind of reflecting a much different color as you moved out in the beam, and then it moved back, and it bent back into, probably light bending back into just white, uh, further, farther away from the source, okay. All right, so, the thing is to kind of, you know, transition it, okay. Okay. I have to hold this up. It's kind of hard to tell for me, even sitting here, kind of what that's going to look like. See that right there? Looks like I need a lot more white in some areas. Well, I didn't even apply some yet, so adding it in. Okay, so I've gone black, then I'm going to white, but I'll go with, back with black again, okay? So see, it's more of a circular process. You just keep adding in a little bit more of what you want. Okay. You don't have to look at it as like a, a process that's like from use one thing, then use another thing, and then use another, you, you know, you can always go back to other colors um, to refine things, you know, so you're going, I mean, in this case, it's kind of the polar extremes, you know, from black to white, and back to black again, and then maybe to white again, you know, it's really kind of juggling along, but but I'm not really not using just, I mean, you were using black and white ink, 
but I might be applying a little bit of it, you know, where the color is showing through. So it's not like you're going to 100% black, 100% white, you know what I mean? You're just, if you do a dab of it, you're doing very light application of it, so it's more like a, I don't know, if you're using black, you might be doing like a 5% gray, you know, or something like that. Or you're adding, each dab gives you 1% gray at a time, you know, and if you add enough of it, then you'll get to 100%, um, which will be black, okay? With this white ink right here, you just do a little dab, and, you know, a lot of the black is showing through, so again, it's like you're working with, you know, variations of gray, okay? You just happen to be using, you know, the, the extremes in terms of the ink and, uh, you know, or source, okay? All right, so for me, I don't know, adding this in here, it's it's really hard to tell kind of what's going on <laughs> for me <laughs> until I get the imagery stamped in here. It's it's really hard to kind of get the gist of what this is going to look like, in other words. I don't know if this ink, if my impressions are going to give me a good impression. I don't think my black on all this ink is going to stamp very... Um, clearly okay i'll try to heat set it a little bit all right so let's go back to black here let's see if we can show you right here okay so see that so it's kind of blocked off and it's get you have this kind of color banding around here so i've left some areas clear i mean if you if i go like that well i don't know that white blocked off pretty good there didn't it see that red pink thing going in here you can't really see it so well, that's kind of what we're going for all right so i mean these are really sloppy at this point in time. They don't look like beams. So I'm going to have to go back in and refine it again. So let's see, everything got too, I don't know, blobby in here, right? So what you do is you just go back in. Now I don't want it super crisp again, okay? Either, but you know, you just you just want to define some things a little bit more. And you can just kind of you know pick and choose where you added, or, you know, I mean, you don't have to, you know, be super um, decisive about it. Um, you can just kind of add a couple, and, you know. See, I'm just kind of adding these crisp areas of this beam in a little area right here, okay? You can do it, it doesn't have to beat down the whole beam, you can do it a little bit right here and then skip a little bit and put it down here. And then when you take that off, it you know, those little two parts will kind of define that beam a little bit more. That's what it is in concept, at least, folks. Um, we'll see how it looks in the application, you know, if it looks okay. It's uh, super powerful, though. Piece right now, which I guess you do want the power of it. You know, anytime you get those crepuscular rays kind of coming at you in in perspective, it's you know in a, in a photo or anything. Out in, you know, if you're out somewhere in real life, it's it makes for a powerful visual. But um, uh, let's see how this goes here. Okay. I've really put a lot of fingerprints on the perimeter, you know, as I'm touching this right here. I mean, I'll, I'll go and I'll kind of touch up all my fingerprints when I'm completely done, where I don't have to touch it anymore, but um, I do like to get some things established a little bit um, during the process. It's one of those cards where if you ever, um, someone's ever looking for you and they need some uh, fingerprints um, from you, you know, if they looked at your card like this, chances are they'll be able to pull a pretty good print from you. All right, so there we have it. God, that is so busy, though. I think what is happening right now for me is there's just too much symmetry. It's, everything is kind of built about the same. I'm going to knock down... A, a, a few of these beams, okay, um, like 
this. Okay, so we'll make this one a little bit darker. And I'll close it off as well down here, okay? Okay, so see, I've really darkened this one in here. I don't want to get rid of it, but um, I just want to knock it down in terms of its power. All right, like that. And I think looking around here, too many extend out too far, okay, to the perimeter. So we'll have that going down there, but we'll just kind of close this one off a little bit. Or maybe just the bottom side of it like this. We'll kind of come into it like so. And I will kind of vignette it off like this, okay. Same here. Too much. Okay. I mean, maybe I should do this later on after I stamp on my imagery, where I can kind of get a better idea of where everything is going to be so I can kind of create shadows underneath. Okay, so um, that looks okay to me so far. Let's go in and uh, let's heat set this a touch. really changing the spirit of the ink you know this is an oil-based ink which is very shiny and dark and it it did turn it kind of flatter all right so I don't think this is, is completely dry or anything like that by any means but I think it has taken out enough of the moisture to where um, I'm not completely stamping wet into wet here okay and wet into wet with this, I just, I don't think it, it, uh, it's very conducive for um, getting a good transfer of ink from my, my stamps when it's just too sopping wet down here. It don't, it just, it comes off by like a, I don't know, like a vacuum. Okay, just to, so I make sure I get some pretty good impressions here. We're going to go with uh, some re-inker of the graphite black. And we want a smooth application of ink, so just smooth that out a little bit, like so. All right. Tree Trunk Trio, this will be my central image in here, and hopefully that stamps out reasonably well, uh, because it is kind of the focal point image, all right? It's going to be very layered in here, so if something doesn't stamp out, maybe I can layer it more with um, additional imagery. Let's go fairly high with this one too, okay? Like so. All right. So it's going right off the top of the uh, card here. All right. Pretty good pressure. You don't need to use extreme pressure or anything like that. It is fairly thick ink, so. Um, but definitely get pressure in the center area not just on the perimeter. Oh, hmm, that looks pretty good, actually. I, I, I wasn't heat setting before um, with my early tests um, on this paper, so I think that was the key to it all. All right, let's go with some, another impression of this over on the side. I'm going up a little bit higher here. Okay, and let me go 
go get this other stamp too. I have another one called just called tree trunk. And that'll provide a, another size of a image off here on the side. Okay, here's another tree trunk right here. Okay, I have something on my paper right here. I don't know what that is. It looks like a uh, it might be one of my crystals, and yeah, it's all black now, but, okay, I'll go with this one about like so. All right. So we're building and layering <laughs> and hopefully getting what we are kind of going after in here. Okay, some other trees in the background. Okay, I don't want this base right here, so I want about that portion of the tree. So let's just take paper towel. You can do it two ways. You can just lay down a mask there and stamp over that, but I think I'm just going to remove some of the ink like so. Down about like that. You have to kind of really make sure that you remove it with this uh, pigment ink because it is just so thick, you know, just kind of doing one wipe might not take it all off. If I do get a little bit, that's not, you know, any big deal, but we just don't want a, um, a lot of that ink on the base if that's where you wanted to remove it. Okay. Okay, there's a background tree. Alright, so a lot of uh, a lot of building here. Alright. And this one I'll take off even more ink off the base to make a smaller tree in the background. So it's roughly about right here. I'll just put my finger right there so I kind of know, you know, just in general about where it is. And let's come over here a little bit more. Okay. Let's do that again. Okay. Okay, I went down to about right there. Wipe off. Okay, it's right about right there. Fingers on top. Another tree in the background. About like that. Quite high, but it, things higher up on the composition represent um, objects that are farther back in the distance. Okay. Let's go for a second impression of that. Let me see if I can get a lighter impression right in here. I don't know if it will. Sometimes you want to go for the second impression to give you a lighter impression, and that could represent something farther back in the distance due to a decrease in value, darker things closer, lighter things farther back. Okay, this is the third impression. That worked pretty good, okay? So here's one impression. Second impression is almost as dark as the first one, and the third impression is that right there. I could probably even go for a fourth, I don't know, like right in between here where I don't want things too dark. Let's try it. Yeah, I don't know, not too bad. All right, so see that, see how, I mean, see how these rays are looking now? I mean, this is, you know, by the time you layer everything over it like that, that's why I was saying you don't have to be too you know, um, careful about your placement of the beams, you know, there's going to be so much imagery over the top of it anyway. Sometimes kind of people panic early on, you know, when something isn't looking kind of, you know, <laughs> I don't know, photo real or something like that, um, just in the preliminaries, but kind of when you start building things to things, that's kind of when it all kind of comes together anyway, so you don't need to worry about things. 
Okay, let me get some additional grass texture down here, and uh, we'll texturize and add some shadows down here. Actually, um, I think if we add the shadows right now, that'll be better. Okay, because what I'm thinking about is if I add um, my imagery down here, and then go back and blend it out, I'm, go I'm going to be smear smearing a lot of imagery. Now, we did have to get this imagery stamped in here just so we can kind of establish where things are. Um, but uh, some of the smaller things I think we want to do after toning, okay? All right, so let's look at this. Okay, so our shadows, um, our light is coming like that. So that would stand to reason that this tree would cast a shadow in that same um, direction, okay? So you just kind of, I, don't, I can't see my little white dot down here anymore. It's probably like right in here. So see right here from the base of this, tree right here in the direction of that. I mean, I could add this down like this, like that, you know, and do a little line like that. I don't, you know, here, let me do that right here. Okay, so I'm adding a little, see that shadow like that? Okay. And I don't know, maybe that is a good idea to kind of mask. Okay, so it's probably like this right here, that little dot, and then I'm going to the base of my tree like this, okay? And then I'll add in that shadow like so. Okay. All right, so see that, how that's casting that? You get it right here? See the base where that tree goes down right to there, that point. Then we just add this back in here. Like I said, I can't see the dot anymore. It's probably like right there. And I'll add this in like this, and I'll add, oops, opposite way, uh, go like that. This is coming into contact with that edge of that tree at the base, and then you just add this in like so. And then come out from it like so, okay? Like that, see that right there? I added a little bit too much, it's all gummed up right there, but we're gonna add in some other things. Okay, so I have that edge right there. Now, this area right in here, I don't really need to. Well, maybe I will. I was gonna say, there is a little bit of a space there, so we'll go in like this, at the base of that trunk right there. Yeah, I'm usually not doing this, I'm usually doing kind of the opposite. I'm adding in the white light coming from the background, so I have, you know, I'm masking off with two pieces of paper, adding in white. But this is, you know, a little bit different here. All right, so see that right there? Well, we've anchored that tree down here. Now see, here's the edge right here. Here's this line coming out. I already have kind of a line coming out like this, so let's just tone in that base of that tree like this, okay? Oh, you know what happened right here? I can see my tree in my pine tree this part of the rubber where I've wiped off um, a lot of the ink and I stamp that image where I stamped uh, a bare piece of rubber into that, you know, that wet tree trunk, black tree trunk, it removed ink off of that. So it kind of lifted ink off of that. Well, one of these days we'll kind of incorporate that into the, uh, the technique, you know, uh, we'll stamp an image out. And we'll take an image, you know, that doesn't have any ink in it, stamp into it, and remove ink out of it and do this reverse type of uh, impression. Okay, so we have this imagery in here. Let's give this a little bit more of a vignette. We'll kind of darken in the perimeter now that we have our imagery in here. See this? The light is coming from the center here, so on this tree right here. I'll darken in that side of it, the left side because the right, the light is coming from the right. And over here, you know, we don't have like a solid tree like that, but I'll still darken in this area over here to really reinforce that idea of the light coming from in here. So we'll just darken in this whole area right here. Maybe not darken it in so much where you can't see the tree trunk, but you can come into, let's, let's go into about half of that tree right there. See how the light is coming, you know, the light direction is getting stronger by making the areas on the perimeter darker like that, okay?
does that look? Fairly dramatic. You know what I need to do, though? That tree is a little bit too um, light, so I'm going to take this, I'm going to squeeze it to make it a little bit more narrow, and just very lightly dab into that to make that, to give a little bit of um, ink to that tree. I want the detail in there, so I'm not going to go over it too much, but see that, just that little bit kind of helped it a little bit. Okay. Now I'll darken the trunk. Kind of you do a darker base like that, and sometimes it um, it will kind of anchor your imagery into the scene a little bit stronger. Now, in here, too, I mean, I can come back in. I mean, it wouldn't be bad to have some white going in front of these trees like that. I just don't know if I could do that. And we might try it a little bit, but we'll heat set first, okay? So I'm going to heat set this first here. Or should I stamp? Let me try to stamp some imagery in here first. Okay. Or a little bit of texture. Um, let me grab, I think I'm... I need my sedge fillers. Okay, this is my sedge filler stamp. Okay, just some texture. It acts as a good anchor down here um, in the trees anytime you have um, kind of land-based imagery. All right, let's see here. I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to kind of, here, I'm going to wipe off the perimeter a little bit. Remember, I did re-ink my Brilliance pad, and I don't want this to be too heavy, so uh, maybe I'll blot it off first, too, okay? And we'll come down here. <laughs> okay, I can't see it at all. Let's just go for the uh, um, straight impressions of it, okay? Yeah, that looks pretty good. I don't know if you can even see it um, on the video here, but uh, you can see that kind of grassy um, texturing down there. Okay, let, maybe I need a little bit more right here. Let's hit it with a little bit of heavier one. It just, I don't know, it, it, it anchored it down. The, the things were kind of floating before, okay? All right, so that's, that's one texture. Okay, now this one I, I use all the time back when. If it's right in front of me, I'm using it all the time. This is called Tiny Rocks. That looks great. It's, just, it's giving a floor to the imagery. an anchor texture. That's right. Ground cover or something like that. Okay. Okay, but that looks better though, doesn't it? Yeah. It seems like it's sitting in something. Yeah, that is really quite dramatic. Let's darken it in a little bit more up top. I, I'm just kind of containing things a little bit more. It was a little bit open on the top. Not that you can't have, you know, beams going up that way, but I, I think kind of a more vertical, or horizontal, I should say, um, kind of configuration might be better. All right. All right. Now, like I said, I mean, we could have done this on a white piece of paper and added colors in there, but kind of having that, you know, with that activity in there in terms of um, the color changes with the holographic. It, it's pretty fun to have in there as a kind of an added feature or something like that. All right, this is called Winter Brush here. Okay, just another kind of texture to use in here.
it's kind of in the shadows a little bit. Like so let me try something right here. I'm going to wipe off all the ink off of this. Or as much as I can. Okay. Now let's stamp this into this black area right here. That's it's kind of I don't know if it's boring, but let me go with a, a little bit like down here. And let's see if we can remove and get a reverse image into that. There's so much solid black right there. I just want to add something to it. Yeah, that was perfect. Look at that. See that right there? Where it, it's going to focus in. See how it removed that? It just took it right off of that. So I'll probably texturize and I'll add something black in front of that, but that'll add, give me an added texture within that space. All right. I don't know if I need to heat set you know, at this point in time. It's coming along fairly well. Okay, let's add in some foreground reeds. I'm kind of tempted to add a deer or something in here. Like in this space right here. And eh, I don't know if I will. We'll see if there's room. Okay, this is the reed stamp. We're doing this in black. <laughs> okay, where I stamped it into the darkness, it kind of, it's a little bit reversed out. Okay, this is where I was talking about where I'll add black in front of that. Eh, you don't really see it too much, but not too bad. Okay, now I don't know what this is going to look like over the black. Yeah, you can't see it at all. <laughs> okay. Black on black. Right, it stands to reason we couldn't really see it, but here's those reeds right in here. See it? It does add a little bit of depth to it, doesn't it? It's kind of hard to see if I just show you like that. But... All right, let's see. Contemplating something right in here. I think it, I think this makes a loud enough statement as is without adding in like a deer or something like that in there. It would be kind of interesting if I left a little bit more space in there. Okay, so let's, you know, I'm tempted, I'm really tempted just to leave it as is because I think it looks pretty cool as is, but with this being, um, <laughs> like a laboratory environment, and there are certain types of things that are in my head that I'm wondering about. Let's go ahead and try it out. Oh, let's do this too. Let's take this little tiny rock stamp and let's remove a lot of the ink in here. And let's come into, see this little black area in here? Let's go in here and reverse um, some of that texture in there. Okay, let's really wipe that off pretty good. So I guess you can do that with the with the with the sedge filler stamp too, right? You can kind of go in there and remove some of that as well. So that is a pretty good uh, device, I think, for us as stampers when you can stamp into that area like that. Okay. So see here, here's the you know the positive, and that's the reverse. So you have this interplay. Like that, and here's another one down here. I, I didn't go crazy with it in there because I want this to be dark, but just getting some of that mirroring of images, imagery like that, kind of contributes to the overall um, kind of uh, continuity of um, a piece. And let's do that up here too. Okay, that wasn't very thick over there, so and I think that might have been heat set, so that didn't remove. Okay, so. Let's see if I can get any removal up there. No, I, I, where I heat set, it's not coming off. Okay, well, that's fine. That is interesting, though, that we can heat set like that. Okay, so, okay, here's the thing that I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about adding in some additional white in here in front of some of this. So let's heat set again. <laughs>
that's enough. But I think that's all I'm going to do right now in terms of that heat setting. You can kind of run it in there a little bit more if you want to, but I don't know. Okay, so let's try to apply some additional white on here. Okay. I do have my stays on pigment too, but that, I don't know, that just dries so fast. Okay. All right, so here's the beams. It's, I've kind of lost track of some of the beams, you know, in terms of where they are. But let's go in here and let's see if we can add in some additional effects in terms of um, kind of lightening and varying some parts, at least, of the uh, images that we stamped in here. Okay, so we put, you know, black, white down, black impressions over it, then you're putting white over the black impressions. Okay, so see, this is what I mean by this right here, adding a little bit of that white over that tree, now it looks like the light is coming from that direction. So we've reiterated the lighting direction, you know. I don't know, it could represent mist or fog too, or something like that. Now where I'm adding this white is where it's already light, okay? I'm not going to add this white over here, you know what I mean? It would be in the lighter areas, okay? So we have some of these background trees in here, and maybe they're kind of, okay, that's really kind of getting some of that uh, um, black kind of mixed in there. So that area back there is not dry. So what you're going to do is you're going to, going to have to make this um, cotton ball a little bit more moist than the surface down here. If you're going dry into wet, the wet is going to transfer into this. But if this is wetter than that, then this will transfer, hopefully, you know, or a little bit better at least. Okay, so I'm going like that. Now I'm going to add this on very lightly like this, okay? So it applies, so it transfers, okay? All right. Let's go down here a little bit. I like having a little bit of fog at the base of my trees a lot of times. And see, there's a lot of light coming in from between these trunks, and let's see if I can get a little bit of that lighting on there, like so. Yeah, that looks great. Okay, so see, I'll show you what I'm talking about. See this right here? I'm just dabbing very lightly like that, so it looks like that light is coming from between there. I could use a little bit more, like on the shadow, I think, here too, to diffuse the shadow a touch. Uh, I wouldn't go too crazy here because, um, like I said, this is really wet, so, um, but it is fun, I don't know, you know, it is fun to add down there, I don't know, maybe I change that if you want to go crazy, go crazy, but just keep an eye on what you're doing, you know, as it develops here. All right, I think that looks pretty good there. <laughs> it's hard to tell kind of what you're doing. It, it kind of cracks me up because I'm looking at it at a certain angle when I'm working on it, but this is what it looks like at different angles. So um, it's kind of hard to tell sometime of uh, you know what you need to do. But any little tap though doesn't change the spirit of it, you know, so entirely. So. You know, you're just doing a little bit at a time. I'm shaking up my Meowzin acrylic paint pen for some additional effects on here. All right. Lighting highlights 101. The light is coming from here. So the trees to the right of it will be left side illuminated. Light is coming from the right side on the trees to the left, so they'll be right, right side illuminated. Just in general, if you put a few dots on, you know, one side or the other, it's not going to matter. You don't have to be too particular about it, okay? All right, so let's see what this looks like here. All right, so 
I'm not going to go too crazy with this. I've been saying that a lot during this stream, but... Because I, th I think the, the foil is a pretty loud statement, you know, in terms of a visual statement, okay? So I just don't need to do, like, exciting, you know, too exciting uh, effects. I guess what I'm doing, you know, what we're doing in here, a lot of things, is we're muting a lot of the effects, right? Like, I blocked off a lot of the paper, right? So it's like you start off with, you start off with a piece of white paper, you want to make it things as exciting as possible. You start off with something that's crazy exciting like this, you know, it's almost too much. So you just, you know, you just kind of mute some of it, okay? So here's some of those little dots on this side. See how it kind of pulls these trees out from the background a little bit more by having those highlights on there? See those white highlights on the, uh, the right, the uh, left side of the tree? Pulls, it, pulls them out from the, the background a touch like that, okay? I wouldn't do them everywhere, okay? I mean, you can add quite a few, but... Um, okay, now I can just access this easier, flipping the card upside down, so that's why I'm doing this, okay? But the light is coming from in here. So... The trunk that goes all the way down here, I just kind of put a lot of white pigment ink over the base of it, but that pine trees, you know, I'm just putting a few little, I don't know, kind of dry tapping touches down there like so. And do, should we put it on the uh, interior? Yeah, why not? Trunks here. These are kind of being backlit, they're not being side lit, so you can put highlights on both sides of it. All right, you see that right there? So there's highlights on that side of the tree down right here. Put little highlights on that tree. Highlights on this side of the tree. Okay. So see, focus on these highlights here and here. See how much more dimensional the piece looks by having that? Look at that. It's like sunrise coming up, huh? When I change that like that. It's like dusk. Okay, so it's like sunrise or whatever. And it's like twilight. <laughs> you know, when you change that holographic, isn't that fun? Okay, so down here, um, let's add some highlights down here onto the uh, forest floor. I mean, you can put some highlights on those reeds down there or something, or on the um, winter brush if you want. I don't think I'm going to. Uh, okay, let's take a look here. See those little highlights down here? See, they really kind of stand out, but, you know, this is looking at it arm's distance, though. You know, where someone would view it, so it's not like you're saying, oh my god, you know, it's crawling with a... Uh, you know, little termites or something like that, you know, we look, you know, we usually don't look at scenes like this close, you know, it's like three inches from our face, but that's where all those little dots are, see that? But this is like an arm's viewing right here, so, hmm, that is a really fun scene, but when I saw that photograph, I thought, oh, we can do that, you know, or, you know, not do that, but we can reference it and do something in the spirit of the photo, so, I'll be posting this. Um, eh, let me see here. Remember I was telling you towards the end. See, I can see my fingerprints here. And it, it's not as fingerprinted up, though. I think because I heat set it, though. So, I don't know. I guess, I don't know. I, I didn't think heat setting would work that fast. 
I did it before. Now, this is wet still, and I can still manipulate it, but I don't know. It's It, it works pretty good. Uh, I wouldn't, you know, don't do a scene on this to mail it out, you know, the same day. I, I You know, I wouldn't recommend that. Maybe you could expedite it somehow, but um, uh, I would, uh, you know, just set this aside. And I like it to air dry, but I don't know. The heat setting didn't do too bad. I don't know, I thought I did that before and it wasn't quite as effective in terms of the drying time, but... Okay, so now don't touch the side. Look at my fingertips like this from always touching the side and holding it down, but easy enough to kind of blend it around. So anyways, forest uh, light, forest floor lighting. Here's what I found out with this one, okay. Um, well, I've never done the, uh, the beams like this before you know, with the reverse type of thing and the black. I'm usually doing two pieces of paper like this and adding in white, you know, beams, okay? So I learned that. Um, and then I learned that, you know, how just how to incorporate the reverse types of imagery in here, you know, with the... I knew it, that happened to me before, but I really hadn't incorporated it in as a technique. But the heat setting and then the stamping on top of it, and then maybe heat setting again, you know, for the ability to add, like, white over black, you know, that's the white pigment ink in there. You know, if this was sopping wet black ink, I couldn't tap that white into it. It, it wouldn't apply. It would just, I would just be smearing the black, or the black would be coming off the page onto the cotton ball, so, you know, that little area of, like, white in there. I mean, that looks really good to me. Um, I always like kind of the diffusion of imagery a little bit, or a lot, um, to represent lighting in, in a given piece. So that is really fun there. And I don't know, just overall the, uh, the um, impressionability. I was worried about all that black in there, but I just said heat setting, it just took care of that. Otherwise, I don't think I would get such solid black impressions on here because that all that um, uh, wet pigment ink behind there. Brilliance, it has to be brilliance, okay? If this was real wet in here, oftentimes this tree, for example, wouldn't stamp out real well there. But just heat setting it, I don't know, what was that? Like 10, 15 seconds took care of that for me. But anyways, that's fun stuff. And again, you know, the holographic is pretty exciting in terms of, um, you know, the color abilities of it. But just, you know at different angles, it looks just to look at that one. You know, it's almost like a different card. You have that card, this card, this card, you know, it's just different, you know, depending at the angle. I can't even get that twilight one. Where was it? Like that, maybe? You know, where it's kind of darker? But then one of them looked, at one angle, it was like all like yellows or something like yeah, maybe like that. It doesn't that look more like a sunrise or something like that, you know, then it's just changing, um, you know, with the time of day or whatnot. But anyways, yeah, it's not so crazy busy like this over the whole thing, and that's where that white, you know, kind of blocked off and uh, I tamed that area out here, and then I put that white, with, you know, it was on the exterior right there, so it's kind of like in this area right here where we get a lot of that color and that was just referencing that photograph. You know, I might change things again in the future, but um, I don't know, this is just a, it's just a really fun service to work on. And again, the brilliant things or something like a stays on, but if you want to spread the inks around, I'd really recommend investing in this. And you can use the brilliant ink, you can use this for, you know, where you would use black um, pigment inks as well. If you stamp something like this on onto a matte paper, and you want to emboss it though, maybe this would die a little bit too fast for you, but um, I don't know. These are um, some pretty good pads to use, um, to, or to have in your repertoire for unconventional stamping services such as foils. All right, thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, please leave a like, hit the like button, and if you like the video channel in general, maybe consider subscribing. Okay, fun stuff. Thanks again.